There are new standards in the United States for the spreading of fertilizer, including manure, on frozen grounds. The guidelines give states more flexibility to adapt manure management practices to local and even site-specific needs and conditions, as well as to expand use of technology and methods of managing nutrients on the farms. Eric Ohms, a second-generation dairy farmer, sits on the New York Farm Bureau Board of Directors, where he serves as vice president. We visited Ohms on his farm. We're dairy farmers. Um, I milk cows every morning. I milk cows this morning. And I spend a great deal of the time just being involved in the process of making sure farmers' voices are heard by the uh, local, state, and federal government. He says that the state already has the most progressive and rigorous standards for nutrient management in the country. We've got to protect the water. Uh, as New York City has the largest municipal water supply in the world that's not filtered. In North America, Dairy cows alone produce more than 375 million gallons of untreated waste per day. The average cow on our farm will produce 50, 55 gallons of manure. That would fill this, this tub every day. But we have to find something to do. We can't just have, you know, a thousand of these uh, for every cow. Ooms' farm is one example in the state. Here, the manure is stored in this huge container located in a flat area far away from downspouts, ditches, streams, rivers, wetlands, and ponds. Our slurry store, which is what we use to um, store our manure through the winter, um, will hold 1.66 million gallons of manure. And we have this storage uh, primarily because of the size of our farm. We milk 400 cows. But realistically, it's a good practice for anyone because if we put those nutrients on the ground, the manure on the ground in March and April, we end up incorporating into the soil as we plant the corn. For a long time, scientists and environmentalists have argued that the practice of spreading manure during the winter months results in far more phosphorus runoff into streams and lakes. The dairy industry is aware of this problem, and farmers across the nation have implemented technologies to store cow manure surplus, highlights Ooms, especially in concentrated animal feeding operation farms. To address this problem, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, has created special rules for farms with at least 700 cows. We have, I'm guessing, about 700 farms that are over 700 cows that have to do all these management practices. Uh, we're a medium-sized uh, CAFO, which means that it's a good idea for to do these things and eventually we will be required, but at this point, everything we've done has been proactive to prepare for the future. Uh, from the 200 cows to 700 cow range, it's a couple thousand um, dairy farms in the state. The Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service, which works with farmers to develop manure and nutrient management techniques that protect water supplies, recommends a storage area that is big enough to stockpile six months worth of manure during the winter months. Everybody's doing some level of these management practices. If you're under 200 cows, you're not required by the state to do this, but I know of many farms. I know of a, a 70 cow farm that has a, a storage exactly the same as ours uh, because they've just been aggressive on it. And you can, there is payback to having that because the, you're getting those nutrients into your soil. Starting January 2013, every state will need to develop new standards regarding spreading of animal manure on frozen grounds. To date, at least a dozen states have prohibited manure application on frozen or snow-covered ground. Pennsylvania, for example, adopted a new manure management manual that specifically addresses the amount and timing of manure spread during the winter months. This is another initiative that will protect the water supply from dangerous pollutants.